Picture this, you're working on something important and then this happens. No. Okay, maybe it's not that dramatic, but it still sucks. And for as long as people have had water bottles, we've been dropping them. Despite your best efforts, you'll more than likely have a dent on yours sooner or later if you don't already. So when that time comes, you might wonder, will this dent affect my bottle's insulation? Sounds like an easy question to answer, right? After all, we're not talking about rocket science here, it's just a water bottle. Well, it turns out there are a few factors that go into answering that question, including the location and severity of the dent. So today, we're denting and cutting open bottles for science, and we'll try to answer three main questions. Number one, what is the worst place on your bottle to get a dent? Number two, how deep does that dent need to go before it starts affecting your insulation? And number three, once a dent is big enough to impact your insulation, is it a flat drop-off in efficiency, or is it a more gradual drop-off based on the severity and the number of dents? Thanks for tuning in. I'm Mike with Bottle Pro, and today we're going to learn more than you ever thought you needed to know about water bottles and dents. So let's dive right in and cut one open. So we've got the bottle and the vice grip and uh, I'm going to start cutting it but I'm going to cut a little to the side of this dimple right here. Uh, this is a hydro flask and it is one that I believe was made after they changed the makeup of where they solder uh, after they pull the vacuum from the bottles but in most bottles right where this dimple is that's where you'll actually find that bit of lead solder that you've probably heard in the news earlier this year when it comes to Stanley bottles. And the vast majority of bottles still use lead right there. So because it's a hydro flask, it shouldn't have lead uh, there. But just to play it safe, I'm going to cut a little bit off to the side and then cut in over here so we can expose a window into the middle of this bottle. Did you hear that? That was uh, that was the vacuum escaping, actually. I just heard it filling in there. That was nuts. You can see the slight little opening right there. It's right there. That's where as soon as I cut through, um, I was able to hear the vacuum filling into that bottle or vacuum escaping, whichever way you want to think about it. So anyways, I'll keep cutting. So I think I'm done. Cutting. I'm going to try to pry this off now. Oh, it's pretty much done. So, be careful just to not get any splinters. That's what that inside looks like there. So judging by this, the space between the outer and inner layers on the sides is thinner than what you have on the bottom of the bottle. So there should be more impact uh, resistance, like around the corners of the bottle, for example. So you can see that's actually a pretty good distance there. Um, and I'm kind of curious what that, what's going on in the middle of this hydro flask here. So I'm probably going to cut this more open and see what I can figure out. Before we move on, I'll take a moment to discuss the science behind a dual wall vacuum sealed bottle. Heat transfers through three processes. Conduction is heat transfer between two solids, like touching a stove. Convection is related to the movement of fluids and air. And radiation is heat transfer through visible and non-visible light, which is how we feel heat from the sun. Out of these three, conduction is the most impactful form of heat transfer when it comes to insulating your bottle. Convection doesn't really apply that much and radiation heat Heat loss is not as significant. Conduction and convection heat transfer cannot occur through a vacuum. So with vacuum seal bottles, the vast majority of heat transfer happens through the lid and from radiation. Side note, I did another test recently with triple layer bottles, which include copper layers to prevent radiation heat loss. But my initial results seem to suggest that the mouth diameter has a much greater impact on the insulation effectiveness compared to the copper that's preventing heat transfer through radiation. I'll leave a link to that video in the description if you'd like to check it out. But anyways, the main takeaway that we're focused on is that conduction is the main thing to keep an eye on. The idea behind a dent ruining your insulation is that it can create a contact point between the two steel layers, which then allows conduction heat transfer to occur. However, in most cases, dents don't compromise the vacuum, so there's still good insulation around most of your bottle. But with each additional dent and contact point, there's another pathway for heat transfer through conduction 
conduction, and worst case, a severe dent might compromise the vacuum entirely, making your dual wall bottle essentially become no better at insulating than a single wall. So enough with heat transfer 101, let's look back at question number one, which is what is the worst place on your bottle to get a dent? It's clear to me that the answer is on the sides. This is the part of the bottle with the smallest offset distance between the inner and outer layers, so it would take the smallest amount of deformation to create a point of contact. In some ways, this is good news. While your sides are the biggest part of your bottle by area, it's also the least likely place to dent your bottle. The vast majority of dents occur when someone drops their bottle onto something flat like a parking lot, and so it's much more likely that your bottle will first impact somewhere around the top or bottom rim. And some other good news is that there are many easy and expensive options like bottle boots that can help here. And some companies like Clean Canteen take it a step further by adding what they call their impact base cap, which to my understanding increases that gap distance at the bottom even more. But you could still get a dent on the side like if you drop it onto a curb or a rock, so this certainly still happens to many people. The only real preventative option, other than not being clumsy, is to get a full body sleeve like our neoprene sling for hydro flasks or one of countless other varieties at this point on Amazon for whichever bottle you have. Now let's look at question number two. How deep does the dent need to go before it starts affecting your insulation? When it comes to dents, it's important to remember that the size doesn't matter, it's how deep it goes to create a contact point between the two steel layers. Once there's a dent that meets any of those criteria, I'd expect the insulation in your bottle to be a little worse than it was before. So now let's look at question number three. Does the insulation drop off entirely or is it more of a gradual drop off depending on the number of dents? In theory, I'd expect this to be more gradual most dents should not compromise the vacuum, as you saw when I cut open my old dented hydro flask earlier. Most people think of steel as being very rigid, but it's actually fairly malleable when it's thin like this and not very brittle. So I would expect it to take a very large or sharp impact to completely fracture or cut through the steel in a way that would compromise the vacuum entirely. So my theory is that repeated large dents should gradually reduce the insulation effectiveness, but enough theorizing, it's time to break another bottle. I'm choosing this Revo Max bottle for a few reasons. Number one, I have a 32 ounce one that doesn't have any dents, so we're starting with a fresh slate. But number two, and more importantly, the other insulation tests that I did recently that I mentioned earlier included this bottle, and it had some of the best results. That tells me that the narrow mouth and the insulated lid have much better insulating properties than most of the other bottles that I own. So any changes to the insulation effectiveness caused by when I start denting it on the sides should be easier to notice. Now, to make this unscientific study as scientific as possible, first I did a control test. I filled up the bottle to the max fill line with our hottest tap water, and then I measured the temperature and attached the lid. I didn't take multiple measurements throughout the day because that leads to less predictable heat loss from taking the lid on and off. So instead, I kept it fully sealed until I took the second measurement after four hours. I also ran the same experiment with a single wall clean canteen to give me a reference point for heat loss with a non-insulated bottle. In an ideal world, I'd repeat each part of this experiment a few times, but I didn't do that for the sake of time. Also, I'd be a lot more concerned about doing repeats if the test was shorter, say 30 minutes or an hour. But because I took measurements over a four hour period, that should have been long enough of a time frame to lessen the impacts of some minor differences like variations in the starting temperature or being a minute or so off on the second test. Now that that's out of the way, it's time to get to the fun part. So I built this janky contraption. Um, it's a cardboard box with some bubble wrap and a steel pole going through it. The pole is suspended on two blocks. There's one on the other side too, and it's not touching the cardboard. So it's just on solid ground. And the purpose of the box is to basically, once I drop the bottle, um, it's gonna hit the box and the padding instead of getting on the concrete. So hopefully the goal is that I will have an impact um, on the side of the bottle where I want it, but I won't have any secondary dents or impacts that might affect the test. Thank you. 
After the fourth drop, I still didn't have any sizable dents or insulation changes. I was getting ready to add some water to give it more weight and repeat this again, but then I had a thought. My first instinct had been to test the weakest parts of the bottle, which is why I focused on the sides up until this point. But I realized I should change that focus to where your bottle is most likely to get dents, which is on the bottom rim. So each test from this point forward is me dropping a bottle that's full of water onto concrete, which is the most common way that people get dents, and I'm going to focus the test at least initially on dents around the bottom rim. So here's the 60 inch drop and you can see it had a ton of buckling. And then over here was the 48 inch drop and it also had a ton of buckling. I didn't notice this before though, right where these two cross over, there's a little bit of an intersection on the two drop areas and where they buckled. So you can see a little gap right there. So that little gap, I believe that is what allowed that vacuum to escape and let the air replace it. So that is why it went from being fully insulated to not insulating at all. So I was thinking that the temperature effectiveness would drop off gradually because, um, because there would be contact points where conductive heat could transfer. But, uh, but looking at that point right there, uh, it clearly seems to me that that is a full on um, uh, breach or opening into that inner layer. Anyways, I'm gonna cut this open now and uh, we'll see what's on the inside. Revo Max, to my understanding, they do use a lead-based solder and it's underneath this um, kind of st uh, stainless steel button or cover that's right here. So I'm gonna be very careful. I'm wearing gloves this time. And uh, what I'm gonna do is cut a um, similar window to what I had before. Uh, so you can kind of see in there. I'm curious if the two layers are touching. I don't think they will be. I think that there's gonna be a gap there. And the only reason the insulation failed was because that vacuum was allowed to escape but I'm gonna cut a similar window and we'll see what it looks like. So there's the inside of the Revo Max. It's kind of cool you can actually uh this is what uh, i was talking about earlier with this being a triple layer bottle this is one of those bottles you can actually see the copper on the outside of the inner stainless steel layer there used to be a ton of space here very similarly to the hydro flask um, and then once it compressed over here i mean as far as i can tell it might have touched a little bit right there where like all three of these major impacts kind of converged and tilt, tilt this whole side down. But I, I, I see a gap all the way around it. I don't see anywhere where the uh, two layers actually touch. So I do think it was just that one section right there. So I'm gonna try to cut that open actually and just kind of verify that um, 
that yeah, uh, you'll be able to see light or something through that and uh, confirm that that's where the leak was. All right. So the lead is not exposed on the inside as far as I can tell. So it's just underneath that lit, that cap. So that's good to know. Not really sure what that second thing is there. I saw something similar in the hydro flask. I'll take that apart later. But it is pretty cool. You can see that copper layer on the inside here, uh, which helps with that heat loss through radiation. Uh, again, I'm not sure how significant that really is compared to the vacuum and this being a narrow mouth bottle, but, um, but it is really cool to see that. I've never actually uh, never seen that before. So now I've shut off all the lights and um, I just wanted to confirm for sure that that crossover section between the 60 and the 48 right there, that that is in fact a gap. So if I shine the light from behind, you can clearly see that yeah, that's where that breach happened. So that's why the vacuum was completely gone. And um, yeah, I think if I didn't cross over the 48 and the 60, if I had had them spread out a little bit better, that it would have been able to absorb that impact from the 60, uh, 60 inch drop. And it maybe could have gone a little further, but just that many repeated drops over and over and then having them cross over, it's just a little bit too much for that steel to handle, unfortunately. So what did we learn? My unscientific opinion is that the vast majority of dents will not affect your insulation because most dents happen on the bottom rim and that's where there's the most spacing. I only saw an issue after multiple dents overlapped, so honestly, it's pretty forgiving. So in reality, I would think most people would get tired of their bottle not sitting evenly on a table and get a new one before the vacuum fails. I didn't get to test my gradual temperature loss theory, but I don't think I disproved it either with just this one test. I would think dents on the side could still be more likely to have a gradual temperature loss because they wouldn't have the same kind of buckling as the rim. So maybe I'll do another test at some point and keep my focus entirely on the sides. Either way, if you have overlapping dents or are just curious, run your own insulation test and see what you find. And if you do that, send me a picture along with the results. If I can get enough responses, it might be fun to do a video ranking of the top 10 gnarliest bottles that still hold insulation or something like that. But overall, the moral of this story is that if you're going to drop your bottle, just make sure you do it once or at least spread out the damage. Easy enough, right? Hey, if you made it all this way, give us a quick like. And here's a link to our most viewed video where we compared a bunch of different bottles. Thanks for watching and happy hydrating.